Alex, tell us about your fishing experience and how that led to the development of the flying lure. When I was young, I, I used to fish, sleep, and eat. That, that's all I did. And I, I fished a lot of tournaments. And tournaments led me to Whitehall Reservoir, which, which is ju just down the road here. It's a couple of towns over. And the reservoir has floating islands. And now, wait a minute. You couldn't just punch through them with a heavy jig? You, you can't punch through them with a heavy weight. And I, I needed something that would go under those islands. And I, so I cut up a Coke can, glued a, glued a jig to it, and it all, all kind of swam away from me. And I, I never caught anything on that lure, and I, and I don't have it anymore. I wish I did. But w when, I, when I got a lure to, to go, go away from me like that, it worked in lots of other situations. It worked under docks, under trees. It solved a lot of issues that a lot, a lot of other people had during fishing. So how did you get from developing this bait for use locally for yourself to a national infomercial? Uh, it, it, it was not instant. In fact, it, it was a long, hard road. It, it didn't happen right away. We, we, I tinkered with the lure for about 10 years. Then I, I took it to retail like, like a good soldier, and it, it just hung on the wall with all the other lures. So I, I thought if I invented a better mousetrap, the world would be the path to my, to my door, and they didn't. What, one morning, my phone rang. It, it was a successful TV host who was dabbling in infomercials at the time. 